Okay. Uh, and welcome to Jenkins Documentation Officers. Uh, this is the February 2nd edition of 2023. Uh, Big welcome to uh, Mark and Mark uh, wait, and Bruno Rockton joining as uh, I thankfully have usually and myself um, for the agenda. Uh, we have a little bit longer agenda than usual, but mostly to facilitate some discussion uh, action items. We've got a new blog post from John Mark Massen that we want to highlight. Uh, we had our weekly release this week and next week we have our uh, next LTS release. Um, we have the FOSDEM. Uh, Ha event happening this weekend in Brussels, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Uh, right. And cool. Thank you for confirming, Bruno. Um, and just want to highlight that for a second. Um, a note about Debian 12 and the release of it, which will include and uh, only include uh, Open JDK 17 as opposed to 11. So uh, the future of Jenkins documentation and that. A uh, couple updates for Google Summer of Code and where we're at with. Uh, the Jenkins participation in that. Uh, and again, like I mentioned previously, uh, most of this is pull requests that I wanted to just share and bring up, mention, uh, maybe discuss depending on how much time we have and what which one we're looking at. Um, and it, it mostly a lot of new contributions from new contributors and just a lot of amazing work that uh, should not go unnoticed. So uh, is there anything else uh, on the agenda or anything that I missed that we want to add? Bruno, was there anything from the platform SIG that's not already represented here? I thought we covered it all, but if if not, I'll while we're going through this agenda, I'm going to watch yeah, the platform SIG notes just to be sure. Thank okay. you, Mark. Anything yeah, else? that works. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first item on our list is uh, we have a Brand new blog post from John Mark that was published yesterday uh, regarding the Jenkins application for Google Summer of Code. Uh, the application, the it's the organizer application specifically. Uh, this is something that we need to submit as the Jenkins project, uh, and this is to hopefully get us into Google Summer of Code. Um, more than likely, yes, but uh, this is still something we need to apply for and get approval from Google. Uh, but John Mark's done a really nice review and write up of all the things that have been going on since our, we started and what things are going to be coming up and going on and what the application entails um, and provides a lot of nice interactive links that help with the Google Summer of Code info, mentor info, uh, and just the general ideas of continuing community discourse throughout uh, Gitter and the community forum. So um, just a really lovely blog post that uh, provides uh, necessary insight into where we're at with our Google Summer of Code participation and what to expect. Uh, next up on the agenda, we had our weekly release um, just on Tuesday of 2.389, which uh, has gone out successfully. So uh, hooray for that. And next week we'll be at 2.390. Uh, and next week, we will also be at our next LTS release, which is going to be 2.375.3. Uh, the change log and upgrade guide have uh, been created. Everything's up to date with all backports. There was one that came after my initial submission of the change log and upgrade guide, but that's been since added. So uh, we should be good to go on that. And uh, everything seems to be uh, ready for the release. Um, so barring any unforeseen circumstances, we should be uh, smooth sailing on that. Well, but the, uh, the change log and upgrade guide pull request has not been merged yet, right? So we've- uh, That is correct. Okay, so we've definitely got that auction item still. It's It's yep. got two approvals and and you did add the backport, right? I see it. Yes. Okay. Yep. okay, good. So I think, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and, and merge it because I think okay. we're ready. It's it's coming out. There's no reason for us to delay its availability until next. Uh, delay the merge. Let's get it merged now so it's ready. Okay, sounds great. Thank you very much, Mark. And um, yep. Yeah, and so this will occur next Wednesday, February eighth. Uh, so uh, be on the lookout for that. And uh, Mark, um, uh, will you be doing a live stream for this release as well? Will be. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, Thursday then is typically when you and Darren do the live stream. So um, again, this release will be happening and then that will be the next day. 
Uh, next up on the list, again, just want to mention that FOSDEM is this weekend in Brussels. We have some uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful folks going and representing Jenkins. Uh, Bruno is actually one of those, if I'm not mistaken. Um, kind of along... <laughs> <laughs> so keep an eye out, go look for him, bother him with any questions you have, say hi. Yeah. Uh, I look like that if you ever, yeah, you know, <laughs> big guy with no hair. It's me. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, Kevin. And uh, while I have the mic, I have this contraption with me. So if you see something looking weird on the table, uh, it's maybe Jenkins Booth. Come and say hi. Huh. Neat. I don't want to spoil what that is for everyone, but I'm curious to know what it is too. Uh, uh, you cool. don't have to spoil. I've just finished a live on YouTube about that thing that I used to call Mini Jam. It's a small uh, instance of Jenkins with one controller and three agents, but that's not the subject of this meeting. Oh, cool. Neat. That's for you. Well, no, yeah. but it is a subject of this meeting when we get a blog post about that. Oh, when yeah, we get of course. More stories about that. So it certainly is a subject of this meeting, just not yet. We've got to first Nicely done, get you Mark. to pause them. I will forget. Yeah. <laughs> so very clever. far in the future preview. <laughs> Great, cool. Thank you very much, Bruno. Um, yeah, and yeah, and uh, just again, thank you to all the people that are, uh, all the folks that are going to represent Jenkins and uh, interact and engage with the community at large. This is a really great opportunity to just get to connect with people directly as opposed to, um, you know, we're online. So this is uh, mostly remote. So it's a great time just to be able to talk face to face. Uh, and get stickers. <laughs> Sorry, to and interrupt stickers. once more. Yes. Or buy a t-shirt, we have some. Hey, all right, we've got swag, cool. Stickers, t-shirt, what else could you want? About that? Nothing. Cool. Uh, anything else on Fosden, Bruno? No, no, I'm done, thank you, sorry. Okay. No, no, no worries, just making sure. I realized I was uh, starting to cut you off a little bit and I want to do that again, so. Uh, cool, all right, uh, Debian 12. Um, so this is something that'll be um, releasing in April, May of this year. Uh, what's going to happen is Debian 12, aka Bookworm, uh, is going to launch with J Open JDK 17 as opposed to uh, JDK 11. Um, what this means for Jenkins documentation is that we will need to uh, move forward and start using Java 17 as um, in our documentation as opposed to Java 11. Uh, this makes sure that not only is the Jenkins information up to date, but also usable by anyone who is uh, moving on to J Java 17. Um, this, the Java 11 support will not be dropped until uh, 2024. That is something that I wanna make very clear right now. Mark put that note in here. Um, even though the Debian 12 release is not coming with it, it's still supported. Um, very, very important to note. Um, there's no uh, cutoff for any one at this point in time. And sorry for interrupting you once more. Um, on the latest platform Sigmark, we talked about Timurin quite a lot uh, when we talked about Bookworm. Because, yes, for our containers, we are using Timurin Open JDK build. And maybe we should tell something somewhere in the documentation about our choice of Timurin. Right. I agree. I think, well, there, there's, there's this other question even before that. Should we also change the Windows instructions at the same time? So, so yeah. Kevin, I'd lobby, yes, we should, because mm -hmm. Jenkins, Java 17 is fully supported already. There is no shame in us in April or May deciding that we're going to document Java 17 as our de facto documentation and, and note that, yes, we also support Java 11. It's, it's not, a, this is not abandonment of Java 11, but rather beginning the process of shifting people's mental model so that they know that Java 17 is, is the preferred choice and is very well supported. Yep. And uh, I know that that was recently pushed to full uh, availability for your functionality with 2.361.1. So that is something that people might not know about yet or might not uh, may not have adjusted to just yet. So making right. sure that we clarify and provide this guidance will just make sure that the adoption rate is higher than if it were. So well, and and by May, by April, May, we will now have been, okay, 2.361 was the, L, the the LTS that gave us 
full support of and mandatory Java 11, Java and full support of Java 17, absolutely. We've already released 2.375. Its concluding release will be next week. We'll then be 2.387. That series will go for three months. And by if it's all the way into May before Debian releases, we'll be even one more LTS beyond that. So so really the story for Java 17 is, is cemented clearly. We could, so, I, and that's great. So I'm glad that you're okay with the idea. Let's, let's make that Java 17 story stronger and stronger and stronger. Definitely. Okay. Um, now we can go on just... to Bruno's question of what about oh. Tamarin? Yeah. yeah, what about it? Um, no, yeah, uh, I know that Temerin's the one, the, um, what we use for Jenkins and as far as development goes, but uh, beyond that, Mark, what um, what would you have to share? Or Bruno, what would you, uh, either of you have to share about yeah, Temerin? It's, it's, Bruno, you can describe it. You, you know very well the places where we use Temerin. Oh, well, very well. No, I'm not so sure I know all of them, but also, of course, all the containers, uh, for the Docker container, so the inbound one, the Docker agent, and the last one, I forgot the name, I don't know why, Mark, the third one is... Um, yeah, so SSH agents, SSH. inbound yeah, right. agents, and the controller, all three of those absolutely are using Eclipse Temer, and any, all Jenkins container agents use, uh, all Jenkins containers use Eclipse Temer as its JDK, and that's I think we said one exception, right? Arch Linux, if I remember right, was the one. Hmm. But nonetheless, it's it's very much a thing for us, but it's nowhere mentioned in our documentation on www.jenkins.io. Yes, yeah, indeed. Good to yeah. include that documentation then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and it may be that that we owe a blog post. It might be that the best way to put it is in the installation document for Docker containers, where we describe there that we are intentionally using Eclipse Tamarin. Uh, I don't know which of those, or maybe both of them, because no harm in saying, yes, we have, we like our relationship with Eclipse Tamarin. They support the platforms we want, want supported, and they do a good job of delivering all the Java versions we need on all the platforms we need. Yes, and maybe we should address that in the documentation that will um, explain how to install uh, GDK 11 on uh, Bookwar, for example. That could be our choice because the GDK, open GDK built by Debian won't be available if I'm correct. So that may be the right time to say, hey, by the way, we can install with Tim Urin. Why not? Um, I just don't know how it's done, by the way. I know you can download uh, directly on the Temerin releases page. I know we are doing it differently with Docker because we are downloading a Docker image and putting it inside our images. But I don't know if there are PPA for Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever for Temerin. Actually, I download them directly from their GitHub releases page. So we'll have to find out. Yeah. I Good, good question. And as far as I know, there are deb based and RPM based installers for Temerin. So you can use your standard package manager there. And uh, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to put that in the docs, but I might say, Hey, let's put it in a blog post. Mm -hmm. The reason okay. I don't want, I don't, I don't want to de-emphasize JDK seven in the docs was my thinking that let's keep the story centered around Java 17 there, but they certainly do provide packages in operating system package manager format mm -hmm. for those for those those platforms that matter to us. Got it. And it, um, if we're going to uh, share a blog post or um, any kind of documentation, it sounds like it make, might make more sense to include that as a blog post when the Debian twelve actually is releasing, um, just to right. provide an alternative for people right. that want to use an alternative. Well, and it's a good excuse in that that blog post to say that we in it, this is intentional, right? We have switched to describing Java 17. It's a thoughtfully done thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Nice. So uh, more to come on that then. 
Um, oh, cool. Uh, before I move on real quickly, again, I just want to make sure, Bruno, Mark, any other questions or um, statements on this W12? Nothing topic? for me. Okay. Nothing for me either. OK, thank you. Uh, next up is the Google Summer of Code. Uh, just a quick update here. Uh, our organization uh, application will be submitted in a couple days. Uh, so even though that is happening, uh, mentor applications are still open. Project idea proposals are, uh, for the most part, published, but um, again, still optional to, you know, if you want to submit a proposal or um, sign up, do any uh, pre-work or anything like that. I mean, it, the information is there. Um, we have all the information in our Google Summer of Code and Jenkins page. And uh, we are now getting to the point where uh, we're starting to organize the mentor meetings and um, project meetings to start gathering uh, and getting ready for the initial push and the uh, start of the social and uh, community building aspect of Google Summer of Code. Um, the project ideas were just recently went, uh, pushed from draft to publish. So uh, that is something that has happened in the last couple hours today. Thank you to Jean-Marc for uh, doing so. Uh, and uh, just thank you to all the mentors and participants that have signed up already. Um, we've got a great handful of participants and people that have signed up to be mentors. Uh, the contributor applications are going to be open soon and open for quite a while, if I'm not mistaken, at least a month or two. Um, so the idea is that we'll get plenty more folks joining in and signing up there. Um, it's not just students, it's anyone who's interested. Uh, so please, by any means, if you find that one of the ideas seems interesting, sign up, contribute. You can uh, show up, be there, get what you want out of it, learn. Um, you don't have to be constantly doing something, but you can do anything um, in this case. And any, you know, any contributions would be that, that much more, uh, I mean, that any more contributions would be great. And we can, it can foster discussion. It can encourage others, um, even if it's not, a huge life-changing change submission uh yeah th these are the kind of things that help uh, encourage and expand the community so anyone is welcome to join up uh, and then the last uh, few items i have on here and being mindful of time um some pull requests of note that i wanted to share uh the first one here is in a pull request about adding content to the updating Jenkins and, uh, documentation. Uh, Vandit has gone and added a ton of content. Um, and being a new contributor, this is a lot of content to take on. Uh, not marked as a good first issue, but still uh, they decided to take it on. And uh, just the fact that they were able to create all this content, add this in, and um, just provide a lot of context is amazing and super appreciated. Um, I think I had there was a question I had on here about the Cloudbees Jenkins platform because we did discuss it's coming into life in documentation, but that's been removed. So um, I think the only thing here is Mark. I think you requested changes. So it, um, if there's anything that still needs to be taken care of, uh, we can definitely um, take care of that. But outside of that, uh, would you be able to uh, check out the updated? version of this and just yeah today today does not look good for me but i would hope tomorrow that i can get to it okay and yeah. and yeah i think this needs more work before i'm ready to say yes i've got to do another review of it and i want to mm -hmm. be sure that it looks and feels the same as the install guide and and on the earlier reviews it felt like i could make those kind of changes much faster myself than trying to do it as pull request comments and Vandit's work and Vandit's willing to accept pull pushes from me and from others so he won't object or Vandit won't object so I think that's fair to just let me make proposal or let me make things push things to it and if any of them cause him angst or frustration we can revert those pull requests or we can re okay. revert those commits yeah no definitely Cool. And I have to go through uh, now that it's got, I, I keep forgetting to go through and review the updated updates. So I need to do a review on that as well. So um, thank you for reminding me. 
Um, next up, uh, the light TPD reverse proxy info. Again, this just needs to be tested and verified. Um, I've gone through and reviewed it from a documentation standpoint. So uh, it's just a matter of making sure that that works properly in the way that they're describing it. Uh, the we had a pull request and a uh, this is for uh, this is for the Docker um, repo and this is specifically for uninstalling a plugin with uh, from Docker and uh, this information is not crucial to the Jenkins documentation right now but is something that we would want to include at a later point in time. Uh, this will require some conversation and discussion with Docker experts. So uh, nothing has uh, happened too much here yet, just something to be aware of and that this will uh, be something that we uh, discuss again down the line. Um, the next thing that I had added onto the list is a submission from a newer uh, or actually, no, not a newer user. This is a returning uh, Google Summer of Code participant who submitted a tutorial on the Jenkins file runner GitHub actions. Uh, and this is one of the 2022 Google Summer of Code projects. Uh, this, this person uh, participated in the project and has submitted a tutorial for it. Uh, I've gone through, reviewed in terms of the documentation. Uh, I still need to go through and do a functional test to make sure and everything is okay and works properly, but um, it's been great and John Mark's also gone through and reviewed or at least read through and um, yeah. So uh, there's been some action on here. If anyone wants to check it out, try it out, uh, GitHub run, the Jenkins file runner GitHub action is a newer functionality for me to experience. And I think in the grand scheme of things, it's in GitHub actions are newer in general. Um, so this is awesome. And again, it's another uh, piece of Jenkins that we can, that expands uh, to another area and another functionality that we can use to uh, increase Jenkins presence and functionality. Uh, Kevin, sorry for interrupting, but um, I haven't read <laughs> the uh, PR yet, but what is it about? It's written at Jenkins file runner GitHub action. Is it GitHub calling Jenkins or Jenkins calling GitHub? I guess it's the other way around. GitHub, uh, Jenkins calling GitHub actions? No, no, it's the no. other direction. It is so Jenkins file runner allows me to define a pipeline and have an ephemeral Jenkins that starts just long enough to run the pipeline and then stops. So the entire Jenkins controller becomes ephemeral and, oh. and that entire Jenkins controller. And so this, the project idea from last year's uh, Google summer of code was allow a GitHub action to invoke a, a process that starts a full Jenkins controller, executes a defined Jenkins pipeline, and then exits the entire Jenkins controller. Mind blowing. I love that. <laughs> well, I, I, it's, it, is, it is certainly a significant thing. And you can imagine the level of complexity that involves because a Jenkins controller has all sorts of interesting things going on, right? In terms of well, I actually on my Jenkins controller need 50 agents because I need five different operating systems and three different hardware platforms and blah, 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 blah. And with all that, putting me into a Jenkins file runner condition wouldn't, wouldn't save me much, right? So, so it's, it's a, an interesting idea for certain use cases. Yeah, and I thought I was a cool kid, cool kid on the block, you know, because I was able to start a Jenkins instance with all its agents just thanks to a Docker Compose within Gitpod. But no, uh, I'm not. Okay, got it. That's cool. I love it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Mark, for providing that additional context. I was not there last, so that helps me a lot too. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, if you have a chance, you can check that out, maybe learn something new about Jenkins file runner GitHub actions. It's all there. Uh, but yeah, um, there's more to it than that. They have their own documentation for the Jenkins file runner GitHub actions. So uh, we might be able to add some information from there. Uh, but we'll work with um, now I'm completely blanking. Uh, I think <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I, I just forgot. Um, yeah. Uh, Mark, do you happen to know uh, this this person's name by any chance? I... Yes, Yiming. Yiming is okay. first name and Gong, I think, is last name. A student at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, United States. 
Awesome. So thank you Ian, to, for that and, and just putting that together. I appreciate it. Uh, next up, uh, there was a pull request to update the viewing logs page. Um, this was uh, something that uh, CJ had reviewed and um, submitted an update for. Uh, when we looked into the update submitted, though, we found that um, there could be a lot of updates on this page. Uh, specifically, there are um, instructions for Linux, Mac, uh, but Mac OS X specifically. Um, and so uh, this is a little outdated, uh, but we've been able to uh, acknowledge that and point that out. Um, and Sujay has been working on this updating things, uh, has gone through and uh, worked on updating the Mac OS information, uh, the Linux information. Uh, there is still a question about other systems. And um, this is something that I wanted to bring up here because I know that we've talked about things like Kubernetes and the other systems that are available for installation purposes, which is where I kind of leaned on. Um, but what um, other systems should we be potentially calling out here uh, specifically, Mark? So on the installing page under other systems, we mentioned FreeBSD and mm -hmm. what was the other one? I forget which other one. So if we look for other systems, FreeBSD and oh, Open Indiana. Yeah, I'm not Famous sure we need to mention. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure we need to mention that one or even any of these others. So, okay. so truly, if other systems were completely empty, that's also okay. But for okay. me, the the Open Indiana the FreeBSD one I have installed, and I know it puts its log files in a in a place that matters to FreeBSD package maintainers. Good. Okay. I'll make sure to comment that and add that in there if that's not already put in the documentation. Um, and, yeah. uh, and once again, thank you to CJ for doing this, creating this. Um, again, this is a new, there's a lot of updating to do because um, the some of the systems are a little behind, but um, Thank you again to starting working on this and, and contributing this. Um, real quickly, just to finish up, since I know we're at time, uh, the second to last pull request here is about managing users page content. Uh, Bashwadi has been uh, working on this and has added a lot of information uh, since we didn't have any before on this page. Uh, and I'm working with them now to go through and get uh, some specifics going on, some explanations for some of the fields going on. We've got some screenshots and there still needs to be a little bit more added to that. Um, and we need to also recognize stuff like security permissions, uh, other aspects of managing users in Jenkins besides just managing users um, directly. Uh, and then the last pull request here is um, we've been talking a lot about adding information for detached plugins and Im implied dependencies. Um, this is something that has been started now. Um, again, uh, thanks to, I'm pretty sure Van, it's Vandy. Yeah, Vandy has been going on a tear lately and submitting a bunch of stuff, but um, he added some information about implied dependencies and detached plugins uh, to the managing plugins page. I've been able to go through a review, provide some suggestions and feedback and um, we're working on this as we speak to get a really nice um, visual and contextual representation of this information uh, so that we can address the Tash plugins. We have the list of them here in the documentation uh, office hour notes, um, but we have, uh, but at this point in time, Vandi has focused on the Windows WMI agents. So we are uh, using that as an example, which is great. Um, other ones we can always discuss uh, later on and as we go, um, but with this being so recent, this is a good place to start. Okay, uh, and with that, we've reached the end of the agenda. Is there anything anyone else wants to share, comment on? Nothing no? else from me. Okay. Well, me neither. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, the video will be available 24 to 48 hours, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.